Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a roadmap to Platinum for Kuro Kiseki. So once again, let's just get straight into it, guys. Roughly, this trophy took the the Platinum for this game took me roughly around 100 hours, give or take a couple 10 hours for AFK on the timer of the of the game. So it's it's up there with 100 hours for the game. So just be once again be prepared. Um, for the most part, as a disclaimer with all of all Legend of the Heroes trophies, you're gonna do need to do the usual. And once again, there are missable things, and we will I will leave the Japanese wiki guide in the description for you guys that so you to for you to follow. So once again, these guys put a lot of work. They did this within I think a couple of days this time. So once again, give massive shout outs to those guys for doing the 100 percent guide to this game. So let's get straight in. Let's get straight into it. You're looking at roughly two playthroughs once again for this trophy. Um, you will need to play a certain chapter five four times in order to get the pla a trophy for this game, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So once again, you see here it is the Legend of the Heroes Platinum Trophy. First up, we have is Great Spriggan. This is. In the game, there is certain achievements you need to do, and it's getting all the achievements except for the EX ones, which are kind of like 100 percenters. So we'll show you real quick right over here. So it is the up arrow on the main menu, and you can see all the trophies, all the achievements you can get on here. These are all your accomplished ones. For the most part, a lot of these are just doing things in the game, the, the, the normal usual, and they're connected to the other trophies in the game. There are only two that I can see within this lot that are very are much harder than everything else, and you will have to specifically do those to get them. And th one of them is to get a hundred hit combo in the game. With that, you can pro you can set that up pretty easily with um with with essentially just S craft spamming with Van. But once again, that one you will probably have to do, go out of your way to get. And there's another one for getting a four times multiplier reward for for a battle. Um, I will leave the guide that uh, uh, that a commenter posted on how to do that. But those are the, your two big ones that you're gonna really, really be stuck on, and uh, you would have to grind out. Not you have to grind out for yourself. But other other than that, most of the other ones are very naturally obtained through just doing everything else in the game that you're gonna do for your, for your trophies. Next up is Triple AA. This is essentially your max rank for doing all of the stuff in the game. This is for doing all your quests, guessing all the correct answers, and you get a master rank of AAA. Next up we have is Quest Master. Once again, very much required for your AAA rank. This is for doing all quests in the game. And there's a little bit of a caveat to this as well too. This game in particular has a very different system. Um, you don't actually have to do all, all the quests in one playthrough. The game will remember what quests you have completed, and if you, if you do it in your next playthrough, it will give you the, the trophy for the quest. If you, if you skipped one and you just did it. So it, it does keep track of what you missed. So very, very, very nice, but you're still going to want to do all the quests in the game anyways because you, you do want, if they can give you Zerum Caps or Zerum Powders, Whatever it is, you definitely want those, especially for a nightmare run. And you're gonna need it for your AAA master rank. Next up we have is our law, gray and chaos are in our maximum LGC. So essentially these three bronze trophies links up to this. This is LGC master, as in law, gray and chaos. Those are your affinities. You gain affinities points for doing quests and answering questions in the game. And the max rank is level 5. You will need two playthroughs of this game in order to get it. You cannot get level 5 for all of them in one playthrough. It's not physically possible. You can try your best, but you're not going to get it. But uh, there is optimizations. You're going to want to choose Grey and Chaos choices more often than you're going to want to choose Law choices. Because law there's more Law points in the game than there is Chaos and gray and a lot of the cooler options in the game come with the uh, with gray and chaos it rather than law once again law you're gonna get a lot a lot of so if you're gonna choose you want to choose morally gray stuff uh, or and chaos options and once again the wiki guy will have when i attach it to the links in the description will have what what what, what options give what so we're gonna move on to our next one unbreakable connections in this game um, there are no longer character notes in this game. You just get bond points with them, and you essentially spend 
your your typical gifts from Hajimar, you know, Kiseki CS4, all those gifts, you can get points from that. You can watch movies with your characters, which you're gonna need to do regardless. And you're gonna do you're gonna spend your bond points as well too on them. Once again, this is to get all your party members this trophy. All of all, all of your party, including you, Elaine, and Elaine to max. And here is then once again, this is this is for everybody. This is every single character in the game. Once again, you're gonna be doing everyone anyways. You need to do it everything. So this is typically your this is only for everyone in your party and Elaine and Yume. This is for everybody in the game. You you're gonna see it. Once again, you're gonna need two playthroughs to get this trophy. Next up we have is Battle Master. No longer will you need to scan enemies in this game. Once you kill them, they're in your book. You don't have to do all this fiddling. Once again, extremely, extremely nice. Bookmaster, once again, if you buy everything in the game, when you see books at general stores, you want to buy them. But there is a vendor at the end of the game in the last mission, before the last dungeon of the game, that will sell you everything that you missed. So once again, very, very, very fun. It's not it's not like a grind one too where you have to exit and come back in in order to see if they have the, the new copies of what you're missing. He just sells everything you're missing. Next up is Gourmet Master. This is to reach maximum rank. Um, once again, you're going to need you're going to need more than mass to fully level up your gourmet level. And you level up your gourmet by eating items. And the game will tell you which items you've eaten with a red check mark or non red check mark, depending if you eat, ate, ate it or not, or drank it or not. And it will tell you there. You just got to get to mastering. There's more than enough food items in the game to get to the highest level because you're going to need more to get the hidden the, 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 the achievements from. Anyway, so you're going to need. There it is. Next up we have is Treasure Hunter. You only need to get 150, 150 treasure chests in this game, which is not even like half, I feel like it's a little bit more than halfway through the game, you can get 150 treasure chests. So you don't have to collect every single one in the game, which is a very nice option. But th there is early on in the game, the Treasure Hunter ability. Once again, once I get to the nightmare, the nightmare stuff that I wanna show you guys, I'll show you what it looks like in the game. Next up is to change your holo core and to obtain all holo cores right over here. You're going to need all holo cores anyways for the achievement section because you need to level up every single holo core to max. And that might sound like it is tedious, but this game's holo core system or is different from the old master court system where you don't have to level up against higher level enemies. They they just have flat level of bonuses. So by the time you play from, from the first chapter to chapter five, you're probably going to have a max one max level holocore you can just do that again with your next playthrough and you're going to get level up max I'll, honestly a lot of the holocores aren't very much worth it the, the, yes you get bonuses for your s boosting i don't think those bonuses are as important as what i will show you in, in a bit once we get to once again the nightmare stuff next up is collect your drive all your drivers in the game these allow you to use certain arts and they will be customizable later on you're not going to really care about these until you get to the late end game drive cores because those are the more powerful ones that can give you that can slot in way better stuff so you're not really going to worry about that next up is orbit master this is to open up all the slots which you're going to typically want to do so this is uh what's called this is to complete a chapter with an s rank once again you're going to need to do this regardless the easiest one to do is the is the interlude chapter but once again you're going to once you follow the guide you're going to get s rank for every single one anyways uh, this one is to to do use the negotiations. It's part of the game. You're gonna you're gonna get this no matter what. This one is to create the ultimate. Uh, whoopsies, whoopsies. Um, this is gift giver to give twenty gifts to uh your friends. You can only buy the gifts once. Forever in the game, so you're gonna you're gonna get this pretty easily. But once again, just give the gifts, buy the gifts. It's a one-time thing. You can't rebuy them out in another play to playthrough. This is to use your negotiation 50 times, 15 times. Once again, very very easy. This is to make your master your master weapon in the game. Um, there are different ways to get the uh, the essentially the material for it. Like before in the Haji Mario, I mean Cold Steel games, you would get some Moria ore. There are specific ways to get the the master weapon in this game. In the final chapter, there's a there's an NPC NPC out in, on a bridge. He's gonna ask you for all the movie flyers in the game. 
so if you watched every single movie in the game and you bought all the flyers, you can give it to him and he gives you one of those pieces of ore. But if you don't haven't watched all the movies or didn't do them correctly, there is a vendor that wants the vendor that sells all the books in the game will also sell you all of the movie posters in the game so you can buy them back. It's very expensive that way, but it is an option there. In the final dungeon, depending on what your LGC is, there are three bosses that also spawn in there that can also hold the material. You get, so it, it essentially, in one playthrough, you can get up to four of them. You will need up to, I believe, five master weapons in order for your achievement to uh, unlock. So in the final dungeon, you need for the bosses to spawn, you need a level five in, e in, in either your Law, Grey, and Chaos. And each one... Will give each a level five in each one will give you one hidden boss in that final dungeon for that piece of that material. Next up we have is level up a master once again a master a hollow core to the max. You will need to do all of them regardless. Next one is the spa master. There is this is the one of my biggest gripes with the game. Um, because of the healing and not giving you all your stuff like S boost, your CP, even healing your your backline teammates. There's only one place. There, the spas in the game heal everything other than S boost. So they heal all your. This is the only place to heal your CP fully. So you're gonna have to do that in in all the chapters, aka chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, and chapter six, and the interlude chapter. There is a one for the hot springs before at nighttime, and in chapter three you also have the one on the in the desert as well too. So this is to use all the spas. If you miss one, the game will, and you do it in the next playthrough, the game will remember which one you missed. So as long as you do the ones you missed, the game will recognize it and give you the trophy then. All right. This one is to view all movies in the game. You just, once again, you just definitely keep a list of what you viewed because the game won't tell you what you viewed for this. So definitely... Make sure you know which ones you're going to view. And once again, oh, the, the, the guide will have everything. So just make sure you know which one you're missing. Next up, we have our our beta, our beta battle testers. So this is during chapter 4 when Lizette comes and she starts staying with you guys at the main, at, in the main, in, in essentially the, the apartment building. She's going to have a battle simulator. I would wait to the final chapter to do this because... You, you would you're gonna have to wait they don't the boss battles in here are the just the, the main boss battles at, after every chapter they don't give you anything you don't gain anything for doing them other than this once again the, this these two trophies so you might as well wait till the final chapter to do them just to make it easier for yourself because you're not gaining anything else for them so i'll show it to you right here so this is lizette's room over here you're gonna go over here um once, you can't do it right now where I'm at, but you just go on this computer and you can fight all the bosses, all the final bosses. So let's get back into the trophies real quick, folks. Sorry about that. Next one up, we have L... Uh, uh, SCLM master use it use it a combination of 200 times you're gonna do this once again very very common to do it next up is using your s boost meter 100 times you're gonna do this you're gonna use s s boosting a lot in the game this one is the once again the tricky one like I said for your trophies this is a hundred hit combo you're gonna need to do it but once again you're not gonna are you pro you you would have to set this one up I, I in my opinion next one is using your s craft 50 times. This is a bonus of, once again, of four after beating a battle. Essentially, you gain bonus points in order to get this multiplier to four. Uh, I'll leave, once again, I'll leave the thread that, sh that, has a good, that has a good way of doing it in the comment, in the links below. Next up we have is do preemptive shard attacks 150 times. This is the one when you break your enemy in the overworld, then you initiate onto them with the shards. That's what it is. Next up is achieve a total amount of damage of 10,000. Once again, very, very easy. You're going to do it over time. Defeat 300 enemies on the field. Once again, a very no easy one. Another easy one. You're probably going to do this in your in your second playthrough because the enemies are so weak. You can just destroy them, honestly, almost instantly. Battle battle war. Defeat 500 enemies, 500 enemies in either battle or field modes. Very, very easy. This one is to beat 1,000 enemies on the battle 
the battle command mode as well too. Next up, we have complete the game on Nightmare as your typical Nightmare players. Next up, we have our we have our Chapter Five base story missions. So in Chapter Five, you're going to meet. You're going to have an option to choose who you want to work with. You have four options depending on your LGC meter, aka your Law, Gray, or Chaos meter. So you need for to work with the guild. You need a level three in Law for Kuro Tsuchi, aka Rixia Mao and Zhao. You need three in Gray for Oral Bores. You need three in Chaos. And for Ikagura, which is Shizuna Rem and Kurogane, you need a total of five in both. You need a you need a, a total of five a, five levels in Gray and Chaos. Meaning you can get have three in Gray, you can have and two in Chaos, or whatever combination you want to get to five. But uh, once again, you have to clear chapter five with them. So once again, that's why I'm saying. You, you can do it in two playthroughs, but you need to save scum for that chapter of chapter five, and you have to do it multiple times. Once again, I would suggest in this game to play the game normally, do another, do, just play it fun for fun, then play it again for your 100% clear on normal, then you can do your nightmare run as well. But that once again, it is completely up to you. It does require two playthroughs of the game to do everything. And with that out of the way, these are our basic trophies in the game to just complete the game. So, the biggest, I wouldn't say the hardest one in this game is is clearing the game on Nightmare, but there are certain tri tips and tricks I would like to tell you guys on how to make it easier for you and what I would do. So, once again, Master Cores, honestly, don't mean too much to you. You can choose whatever one you like or just let the game just have the one from the base game. You do want to set up your drive. You do want to set up late game drivers as your main function ones. I like to keep at least one with the, every single driver with at least a healing ability and strength up, just for more and more damage. But the big thing with this game is your orbaments. This is your most important thing in the game for getting battle bonuses in the game. Before you would just use orbs, orbaments, in order to gain flat stats or specific abilities. But the reason why this is so important in this game is each ornament, as you can see here, has a certain amount of energy that is essentially attached to it. And it, it accumulates over all, like on the screen. As you see in the bottom right, those are where your, your points are going. And each, each column has a specific need or essentially set of skills that you're going to want to get. So these are the skills that I would 100% suggest to get. In your top row, which is your weapon skills, I would 100%, 100% suggest burst mass. This burst master, you need 12 fire and three water. My my next suggestion would be revenge master, which is essentially. So, so let me let me backtrack this. Burst master is my number one most important one. Whenever you deal damage in the game, you have a chance of gaining CP back and health back, and the amount is dependent on how much damage you do. This is huge. When you combine it with S crafting, you gain a lot. With especially with a lot of items, you gain a lot of CP back to the point where you can use honestly almost four S crafts in a row. It's very, very important. It's very, very powerful. Next up is Revenge Master. When an enemy is low HP, this essentially will insta kill them. It's essentially the follow up mechanic from the Cold Steel series, where if an enemy is weak, you automatically follow up on them and you kill them. The on the third most important one, um, it's not physically possible for a lot of characters to get all three, but yeah, or even two of them. You have to really mix around with the the orbaments for especially for the weapon category, is Scythe Master. Whenever you break or stun an enemy, it does extra damage. Those are your most your three most important ones for your characters, in my opinion, in the weapon slot. So, for revenge, the the revenge kill it's four earth, twelve dark. And the uh, the scythe master one is twelve is twelve fire and, and twelve I mean six fire and tw and twelve wind. Alrighty, we're gonna move on to shield next. The most important one for me for shield is revenge arrow, which is twelve dark, th three wind. This one, whenever your teammate gets hit, it will fire. Uh, you have a chance at firing out an attack back at your opponent. Once again, and it can be combined if you're weak enough with 
with your with your with your fatal blow as well too. So this is probably the most important one in the in the shield slot. Next up, we have uh, th these are your arts shard skills. To me, the most important one is feather arrow, which is this over here, which is tw is four wind, I believe eight mind or I, I I'm just making up this though eight white the white ones right now. I forget I'm blanking right now or divine. Um, Whenever you have, when you, whenever you cast an art, you have a chance at essentially a follow up attack. This is all that it does. It's, it's just, once again these these skills I'm suggesting just add more damage to whatever you're doing. So that's that's what I consider the most important thing. Um, next up, we have the the extra slots. These can kind of be whatever you want. It's not really so important, but I would highly suggest CP charge. When it, this one will charge your CP after getting kills. And ending the battle and this is your treasure master one as well too so this one is also once again very important if you wanted to see all the treasure chests on the map so those are the my highly suggested skills that you guys go for as well too so um equipment wise you're it, there's there's not much you're really looking for to this game you just be aware that grail the grail lockets or the equivalents of grail lockets in this game have been nerfed they have a percentage. Um, the the normal Grail Lock has a seventy five percent chance of negating a status effect. So please, once again, be aware they did nerf those along with items and delay in the game. So once again, please be aware that it's happening. So don't be surprised if you see something like that happen to you. Alrighty, folks. Once again, that is my roadmap to platinum. Sorry. Once again, long video. So once again, I appreciated you guys. If you guys get any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Peace out.